How Netflix sadly destroyed The Witcher. Fans of the hit TV series The Witcher were hit with devastating news. Henry Cavill revealed that he will no longer play Geralt of Rivia, the show's main protagonist, after the conclusion of season three. A heartbreaking turn of events. And that's pretty much it, because he was the only good part of the show. Because he was the only one who read the source material and didn't call it bad. And wanted to actually follow it. Yeah, we already know how that works out, usually for Hollywood nowadays. It's one that has bred incredible bitterness towards the show, and of course the writers. This is a fucking tragedy, and genuinely unexpected. Losing Cavill has Was it unexpected? brought question where the fans of the show would even continue to watch after the replacement, no. William Hemsworth, takes over the role. In William Hemsworth? The absolute current joke? Oh no. In all honesty, I don't know if I'll still be able to watch the show knowing Henry won't be a part of it anymore. But why exactly did this happen? Sad. What could make a production kick out the lead? Not just a lead, but a massive actor who fans praised as being... Nowadays? The fact that the actor actually liked the source material and that he did not just bow down to the new, better vision of, of the new producers and people who were writing the script. That's, that's probably a very good why. And the fact that everyone was blatantly against the writers, the everyone's, literally everyone except Henry Cavill himself. Okay, he was loved by the people. The perfect fit for the role. And of course, is this the end of The Witcher? I have been yes, a actually, fan of yes. The genre since I was a boy and played The Witcher games. I played Witcher 3 through twice. And I just wanted to make sure that Garrett nice. was represented uh, as accurately as possible. Henry William Cavill has a career that spans over two decades, rising to prominence first in the highly acclaimed film adaption of The Count of Monte Cristo in 2002, and speeding through the industry to roles like The Man of Steel himself. At this stage... Yeah, but we don't talk about that movie. The Man of Steel himself is a little bit meh, but, you know, he wasn't bad at it. The movie just was meh on its own. He's an incredibly in-demand actor, but that doesn't tell the whole story as to why fans of The Witcher love him so much. Henry is a nerd at heart, not one posing for brownie points, but truly into the culture. Well, the first time I got the call, I actually missed That's it. That's an obvious was, problem, by the way. I was playing World of Warcraft at the time, and I had my priorities straight. <laughs> he plays RPGs, loves World of Warcraft, nice. paints miniatures like Warhammer, builds his own gaming PCs, and grew up doing what most of the fans of comic book movies or video game adaptions have been doing. Despite looking like the epitome of a Giga Chad, Henry Cavill was seen as one of the audience when it came to loving some of the- He wasn't even a Giga Chad. If anyone has seen- you can Google it. Henry Cavill before getting in the role of Superman. He was- he was a- he was absol absolutely not even buffed in the slightest. He- he had to work pretty much- uh, pretty much and hard to get where he's at characters and franchises he would later go on to star in, which of course makes him a perfect fit for some of these roles, as he's also a fan, so he's more likely to do it justice. Yeah, so do you correct people? Um, I don't necessarily... <laughs> I, I am <laughs> effusive about getting the, uh, being, being loyal to the source material, let's put it that way. Yeah. Okay. Despite this, Henry's initial casting as the White Wolf was met with much criticism. After all, Henry looks nothing like Geralt. Geralt is a rugged man, Henry is handsome. Many fans questioned the casting decision based solely on this fact. Mad That's true, but first the Witcher series was announced, people people like, okay, CGI is looking okay-ish, kind of dead in the middle, right? But Henry Cavill, is he actually going to pull it off? Is he going to pull it off? People were questioning, I too was questioning it, you know? And that was a reasonable question. Judge a book by its cover, because the cover is never wrong. Mickelson, definitely. Nikolai Costa Wildow, maybe. But Henry Cavill, ugh, no thanks. Pass. The sentiment on social media was that of skepticism for his ability to take on the role of Geralt. But the woman in charge of the project had a different perspective entirely, and it wasn't based on looks, but on passion. He was my first meeting. Mm. I didn't have writers or scripts yet, just a green light and a lot of passion. That was four months ago, and I've never forgotten the passion he brought. He is Geralt. He always has been. I'm so thrilled to welcome Henry Cavill to the hashtag Witcher family. But why exactly was she so <laughs> adamant that Henry Thrilled. was the right man for the job? Well, it comes down to persistence. His love for the Witcher video game series led him to do everything in his power to try and get this job. 
He constantly called his agents and forced nice. them to call the showrunners over and over and over again. Eventually, it worked. He got the meeting before the script had been written, and before casting was even a thought. The seed was planted, and he made a lasting impression. He did that because he knew this role was perfect for Man, that's actually some real dedication. I didn't even know that. That's amazing. Most people don't have even one-tenth of that dedication. And look at this guy, trying to get in on it before anything is even known. Wow. Wow. Man, he must have been omega sad after leaving and trying his best to keep the show on the right track. Because that's what he did. He he fought for the fans. That's why people loved him. Because, you know, as stated before, the guy's real. For him, that he would do it justice as a true fan of the material it was based upon. This turned out to probably be the best decision of the entire production. While fans started out skeptical about his ability to deliver a believable Geralt, his presentation was perfect. He embodied the character on screen, but most importantly, he respected the story too much to compromise, giving fans the assurance that this show would be different than those of the past. A rational concern Good. for gaming and book fans when seeing a media adaption. It's easier to name the ones that have been done well than it is to name the failures, as there are few and far between. But video games especially carry with them a terrible, terrible track record of television shows and movies butchering the initial source material, creating a... Bruh, television just destroys games, you know? They, they, they do it like... Because the people who do this hate games, they don't like it, they think it's stupid, and they're like, yeah, this is gonna fail anyway, so why put in the effort? And you know, when they do put in the effort, the irony is they don't understand it. They, they literally just do it at random. Even if they do put in the effort, they don't know in which direction the effort needs to be put in, and what is actually valuable in these situations slapping the face to the original fans, marketing themselves to a fan base that simply doesn't exist. Writers and producers without respect for the original work, thinking they know better mm. and trying to use the media as a vehicle mm. to tell their own stories instead of the ones fans Ooh. come to expect and already <laughs> love. The Witcher season 1 was of course far from perfect, but one thing True. fans could agree upon is that Henry Cavill was doing the role justice. Even if the story deviated a tolerable amount, he was going to carry the show the whole time, no matter Tolerable is... I don't know. Do people agree it was tolerable? Hmm. To what? Unfortunately, things behind the scenes were starting to go wrong. There were decisions being made that would put everything at risk. Decisions that might even kill the entire show. During the filming of season 2, it became clear that lines were being drawn in the sand. Working conditions were becoming difficult, with constant conflict. Season 2 released, and fans noticed this on screen. People who had played the video games, but more importantly, the people who had read Sapkowski's book. Yeah, and you can notice, the more deviation from the original, the more the authors try to pat their egos, the better the, the, better the critic reviews, and always the worse the audience reviews. Books were becoming more and more disillusioned with the direction. The shift of narrative was clear, things were not really making sense. The source material was being disrespected or outright ignored. The numbers, however, the people viewing were still good, which allowed for a season 3 green light from Netflix, and the ability to perhaps steer the ship to safer waters, if, of course, fan input was heard. Unfortunately, that wasn't obviously done. I wonder was, when was it when the authors, the producers, and pretty much everyone except Henry Cavill started to blame the fans for being idiots, for not liking the masterpiece of a show that they were putting together? During production of season 3, Henry Cavill took to social media and announced his departure from the project. From the outside, this seemed incredibly out of the blue. After all, why would a man who fought tooth and nail to get himself cast in this role give it up when the show was going to continue on without- Well, yeah, but they kind of butchered the thing that he loves. You know, do you want to st uh, stand in the ashes or do you want to stand in the fire and then the ashes? About him. How could he do that to himself, to the show, and to the fans who saw him as Geralt and entirely irreplaceable? Immediately, the internet rumor mills came to life, and theories were being tossed around as to why exactly this happened. One common speculation at the time was that due to DC's push to compete with Marvel, Henry's much more important and lucrative role as Superman was going to limit the time available to act on the Witcher series. Nah. But he'd simply made the choice to give up the role of his dreams on a show he seemed so passionate about in order to continue playing the Man of Steel. But did Superman really kill the Witcher? I wanted to make it official. Of course not. I am back as Superman. And the image is... By the way, that the thing is also a question. Isn't it actually not allowed to even take up a role if the times conflict? Can they even do that? I'm pretty sure there was something, uh, something for that. You see on this post and what you saw in Black Adam are just a very small taste of things to come. 
This theory was shot down early, in part due to Henry's own words. He stated that everyone involved on both sides knew of his desire to maintain both, and that he would play The Witcher for at least seven seasons, quote, as long mm. as we can keep telling wow. good stories, which honor Sapkowski's work. Which could, of course, just have been words, a broken promise. But just a few weeks later, Henry announced that after meeting the new DC director, James Gunn, his role as Superman was now over, leaving him seemingly infinite time. Henry was now out of his two main and most beloved roles within a matter of weeks, and the fans with more questions about what it was that actually- I wasn't the biggest Superman fan. Admittedly, DC's, uh, you know, lineup of movies is complete garbage. They put Ezra Miller in Flash, and it completely flopped, by the way. That's good. But, man, to put Ezra Miller as Flash, it's- the 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 guy's a literal monster. He he should be he, he he should be put down just for the safety of the planet. And they see the side. You know what? One glorious Ezra Miller is not enough. How about we make two Ezra Miller flashes? Yes, that yeah. So I don't know. I never liked Superman in general. I never liked the movies. They were badly done. But most DC movies are kind of shit trash anyway. I hate literally every Batman movie, by the way. Because you can, uh, in my personal opinion, well, I the first Batman movie I watched was a as a kid was the one where there was uh, Freeze, the Penguin, Poison. It, 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 it was horrible. I, I think it was the one with Mr. Freeze, yeah. It was so bad, that ruined Batman for the rest of my life. And when through comics, you know, I kind of st started hearing what Batman does and so on. Young Justice, amazing. But, you know, you can, uh, you can only like Batman so much. Because there's only so many times that... He can pick up a blade of grass tossed in the northeast direction, look at the sky so he gets just a, a minor uh, brain trauma, and then he solves uh, solves the uh, problems of the universe. There's only so many times you uh, I can afford that. Same with Superman, boring character in general. He killed the Witcher. Pretty soon, however, they discovered that the reason Season 2 was noticeably worse than Season 1 was exactly the reason Henry was no longer playing Geralt. In a social media post, one of the Witcher show writers took to Instagram to end speculation. Beau de Mayo said, quote, I've been on shows, namely Witcher, which some of the writers were not fans or actively disliked the books and games, even actively wow, mocking the classic. source material. It's a recipe for disaster and bad morale. Fandom as a litmus test checks egos and makes all the long nights worth it. You have to respect the work before you're allowed to add to its legacy. A bold claim. Like, it's so stupid, by the way. The fact that you you are making a show by a series that literally is acclaimed by everyone around the world, right? It's one of the most popular things ever, and, and your ego is so unreasonably high that you call it bad? And this is what Hollywood does, by the way. They see something that, that has outshined, outperformed them in every visible conceivable metric by a land double landslide and they call it bad because in their egos they cannot be uh, versed in that it's pitiful the showrunner lauren responded to directly ending her message with quote don't believe everything you read fans again were given the breadcrumb trail to follow before henry had even announced his departure it was clear the show was veering towards its own path away from respecting the books. With this added testimony on social media, it was starting to make a whole lot more sense. Henry's quote about staying for at least seven seasons, remember, ended with, quote, as long as we can keep telling great stories which honor Sapkowski's work. Yep. To Henry, they were no longer respecting this work. Yep. At this point, people started to die. He was actively fighting on, is season two wasn't considered good by the fans, but he actually was fighting against, uh, against the showrunners and whatnot to actually make season two bearable. You, you gotta keep that in mind. He was actually, he's the reason why season two is not a 31 on the Rodden score audience re review, okay? He did a lot to try and save that bad boy. I sect old interviews from Henry and saw that he was even publicly discussing how hard he'd had to fight to get certain elements of Geralt from the books into the show. Quote, this season, I really wanted to make sure that we represented the books Geralt more accurately and that we saw him speak more, I pushed really, really hard for that. As well as later when he discussed some of his favorite scenes from the books being cut entirely from the season. Quote, it was such a shame, a lovely bit from Blood of Elves had been left out of season two. He tried to do it justice, of course, by improvising part of that scene during the death of Roach, Geralt's horse. 
Can we do anything? Oh yeah, they didn't want to even call the horse Roach. The the horse was supposed to be a nameless nothing who no one cares about. It's like this. Didn't seem to go down well in the writer's room. At the very beginning, they lovingly called Henry a walking witcher encyclopedia. Remember, Lauren publicly said that he was Geralt. He was born for this role. So originally, this was good <laughs> to have an actor so incredibly <laughs> engrossed in his role to Regret. strive for perfection. But now that the writers wanted to veer away from that and tell their own stories, using the books as a vehicle for their own ideas, the walking encyclopedia was now a problem. During the fan backlash, which lasted months and is probably still ongoing at this point, writers yeah. from The Witcher went on the offensive. Leaks were being published about Henry Cavill, claiming that he's, quote, toxic, misogynistic, oh, no. and a stereotypical gamer. The claims oh, were that Henry no. and the now-fired writer, <laughs> who were both big fans of the games and books, were fighting to keep things true, and it was them versus the world, the world just so happened in this example to have been mostly female. They claimed that this weird alliance of two men were forcing changes on the regular and ignoring the female crew, which included writers and directors. This led to many complaints to human resources, and Henry was allegedly repeatedly warned. He ignored those warnings and continued his, quote, toxic demeanor, which led to Netflix firing him. Literally the champion of the people, by the way. But allowing him to state he was stepping away publicly. Oh, no, ironically the also. The report are quite telling. They say, quote, his extreme obsession with the game was creating an inconvenience among the crew, which goes in line with what we know about why he wanted to play Geralt in the first place, as well as the writer's public testimony stating the source material was being disrespected. Henry wanted to play Geralt as written in the books, and this is what he was told when he signed on originally. Unfortunately, now they were making him play somebody completely different in a story that didn't exist. That is not what he signed up for, and he seemed to be fighting that every single day, even at the cost of his own job. The fact that the showrunners and writers were female, I doubt has anything to do with anything. The accusation that he's misogynistic just because they happen to be women... Ah, that's just the Hollywood classic. Like, come on, who, who didn't expect the big M word to drop, you know? seems incredibly convenient and relies on the idea he wouldn't have acted in the same manner had they been men instead and writing the show in the same way. At this point, The Witcher Season 3 will be the last we see of Henry Cavill in a role he seemed to have been born to play. After that, the show ends for me and for many other fans. While the new actor, Liam Hemsworth, will undoubtedly do his best to respectfully- Liam Hemsworth is an absolute cuck lord, okay? If you're a Liam Hemsworth fan, congratulations. Uh, I, I'm I'm sure being at the bottom is ve very nice in the bedroom with your uh, wh while you're alone and your uh, you know a wife is out with her boyfriend. Ten out of ten, Liam Hemsworth fans, cucks. Play Geralt. It should be clear to all that the show is now dead. With how season two deviated and how season three will likely be even worse, considering Henry's alleged escalating behavior due to said changes, it displays to me that the actor change is not even the biggest problem the show faces. And without Henry fighting tooth and nail to the point of being fired in order to keep- Dude, Liam Hemsworth is probably gonna push all the bad things about The Witcher even more because he is a 100% that kind of dude. Keep it even remotely serviceable to original fans, the Witcher without him undoubtedly is going to turn into something nobody asked for. Going down in history is yet a another classic. video game or book adaption that could have been amazing and serviced the millions of existing fans, but instead it was, taken it was a by the Far e Cry movie or an adaptation. Wow, I didn't even know. Go of creating something new. Wow, the Witcher, it was fun while it lasted. True. But when it comes to fans, it is a fan's mm -hmm. right to have whatever opinion they want to have. And people are going to be upset because, especially when it, you're talking about books or games, because you're never going to be the exact person who they had in no. their head or who they played on Witcher 3, for example. I don't necessarily consider that toxic. I just consider that bad. Nice. Anyway, this was Quizzer Sensei. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And have a nice day. Bye bye.